Hello and welcome to Fatter Future. We are actually episode 15. Yes, 15. Uh, every time I'm just going to act entirely shocked at what number we've incremented to. I, I think that's going to become a recurring theme if people watch these. They're like, how, mm -hmm. how come they're surprised every time the number is one more than the previous episode? I'm just surprised at the topics that we keep coming up with. I mean, I'm just like, one of these we're just going to be talking about. I don't know. What do you want it about? Oh. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's going to get crazy because you know what we're going to be talking about next month. I'm going to just put a little preview out there, but we're getting close to a special company that has a special day in July. We are. Prime Day. We are very much talking about Prime So we'll have to have that on next month's uh, So we might have some list. gadget talk. Gadget yes, talk. yes. You know there's going to be some special gadgets. I, in fact, I already know about one that, that is Red Review for today, but I want to talk about that. Okay. We've got three topics for today. Um, yes, a little preview for next episode, which would be 16. 15 16 plus one. Oh, episode 16. 16. Wow, Shocking. I can't believe it. Amazing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, topics for today. We're going to first, and we can't go without saying something about this pipeline hack that has really plagued the United States. And uh, we're going to phrase that question about um, ransomware, bad or future, uh, ransomware attackers with a code of conduct. And uh, we'll talk about that. Yeah. And then our second topic is going to you know, touch on the Apple versus Epic Games case. So we're going to ask the question, fat or future, uh, about the App Store model and uh, predict what's going to happen with this court case. And finally, wrapping up uh, with a lighter topic, post-pandemic, uh, fat or future are sanitizing gadgets here to stay. So there's yes. some pretty gadgets out there, and we'll talk about a few of those. Some of the most amazing gadgets. People are just really looking for a solution for a problem that doesn't exist. And we're going, <laughs> yeah, we're going beyond just portable UV lights, okay? Yeah, yeah, some, that's, that's, that's been around that's for a while. Right. Yeah, but, um, no, bigger than that. That's morning news stuff. Come on, yeah. we're going to get into it. we got better stuff, so you're going to gonna hang around to the end <laughs> to watch that part for sure. Don't just hit the slider at the bottom and jump there. Let's get into the good stuff, though. Topic number one. Okay. Oh, ransomware, ransomware. So, um, I guess a little precursor, I guess, just to, again, cover all the details here. So, late Friday, um, it was late Friday, right? Um, basically, the Colonial Pipeline, which is a massive pipeline uh, run by a private company based out of Georgia, mm -hmm. that goes pretty much transpires across the entirety of the East Coast. Uh, goes from pretty much the harbors of New York City all the way down to, I think, Louisiana, Texas, Texas area. Louisiana, yeah. um, but basically, it's just a massive pipeline that does supply about 45% of the East Coast's gasoline. This is diesel fuel, gas, gasoline for cars, and jet fuel. Jet fuel. Um, and so they got a ransomware attack in their systems, and they had to, as a precaution, shut down the entire pipeline. Uh, which means fuel just stopped, Stop. just plain old stopped transporting. And so over the weekend, they found out and kind of divulged that it was a ransomware attack. Uh, a party, Dark Side, Dark Side, Dark side. Uh, mm -hmm. was basically they claimed responsibility, and they were that was reinforced. Um, and it has now taken. We're our recording this on Thursday, right? Uh, so it's taken one, two, almost six days now. Um, around 5 p.m. yesterday, they finally started up the pipelines manually. Correct. Um, and started resuming it. So it took them the better part of five days to basically come back from this ransomware attack. And in the meantime, this is a critical infrastructure. Uh, and, and not to get too ahead of ourselves, but this right. is kind of the first example of really of what cybersecurity has been warning about us for years and years for and over years. Over a decade, right? honestly. It's the, yeah. the, the infrastructure attacks have been well documented, well mm -hmm. vocalized. Um, that they were woefully under uh, underprepared. Sure. So, and, and, and this is a tangible example of a, a large geographic, large population impacted by some mm -hmm. an event like this. But, but exactly. this is really not the crux of our question. That's the background. Right. It's really what happened yesterday. So dark side, the you know, if you will, foreign actors, agents uh, that that you know are driving this ransomware attack. Right. Posted on social media yesterday, and you saw that, right? Right. So they came out and basically said, "Hey, we're not political, and it's not our goal to really disrupt society. We just want money. Yeah, Plain it's a simple. business. Money. It pretty much just said this is not a pointed cause. This is just business. Right. So this right. kind of uh, message really seemed to kind of be an effort to de-escalate the situation, not." Quite say they were sorry. I don't think that really can. That no. wasn't the word no, sorry no, no, no. was nowhere in there. Um, no. But but openly uh, talk about this idea that hey, we're not doing this against a, a government. We're not doing this against 
your country, we're just after money. Now, I, I find a lot of problems with that. So when we talk about this fatter future, I mean, there's a lot of concern here. Uh, this code of conduct of ransomware companies, is this what the future is going to be? That, that we can just get attacked and they're going to come out and say, oh, well, that one wasn't really meant to be that bad or wasn't meant to be that situation. Right. And, and some of the other information that has come out, and again, like cybersecurity people are going to be analyzing this for a long time. Sure. Because this is kind of like this proof of this concept. But, and uh, some other events that actually came out too in accordance with that social media post was there was one post, uh, I think, apologies, I think it's actually on Darkseid's like dark website, like it's not accessible, mm. but it was basically to their, you know, to their people. They basically reinforced that we're apolitical um, and they actually mentioned that they will further vet their partners uh, targets in the future <laughs> um, and they basically put a list of like we do not attack hospitals we right. do not attack uh, critical infrastructure things like that um, they're just looking for the business so that right. was one interesting addition um, the other thing too is that it had come out um, I think someone was an analyzing the code or something and basically found that dark side has an assessment of what languages are being run on a machine, mm -hmm. uh, will, which will actually prevent the system. And so there was a list of Eastern European languages, uh, Russian-based languages that right. might not be impacted. So again, you have a very you have a company that's just not, or you have a company <laughs> almost that's looking for targets yeah, yeah. for prospects and, and they're a criminal organization, is right. what I would like to say. Uh, and, and certainly that's exactly <laughs> and they what's they operate going on. like a company <laughs> and that's well, what's well, scary. I, so I heard this podcast and, and in this podcast they're talking about this situation and, and hacking as a business, right? So this is organized crime in the modern era right. and, and they use the term Robin Hood as a response, as a thought mm. after this social media. And, and that's really what kind of, you know, you look at something like this and you, and you see these hackers post back to the general world saying, hey, you know, all oh, this was just a byproduct of our real mission. And so you have to ask ourselves, you know, is that is that the image they're painting for themselves that they're really just attacking people that can afford to lose, right? right. So you talk about who they're selectively attacking, who can afford to lose this money, and, and they're taking that money. And it certainly is by no means Robin Hood because Robin Hood you know, his whole thing was giving back to, I haven't heard Dark Side give anybody anything. Yeah. Uh, so it's not like they're a charitable organization, but you know, this kind of code of conduct, this, this, oh, we're not as bad because we didn't target a government. I don't think that diminishes their criminal activity at all. So is this fat or future? Yeah, I think um, that was just a little bit, maybe saving face, saving face internally. I mean, who knows about that because I mean, there's there's so many other thoughts about that. If if there were really a uh, do good, if they were a Robin Hood of sorts, there mm -hmm. are tons of other targets that could be less impactful but more good, more causational, sure, uh, if you will. And so, I mean, I think though this is this is kind of going to be the bellwether. How everybody kind of involved in this, how the countries involved, how the companies, how the people, the legal, the social impact, all of that. This is going to frame how these kinds of hacks are approached and whether or not, in truth to that, whether or not these hackers are vilified sure. or, or brought up as kind of like a fighter for the people, which is kind of a scary uh, situation right. Right. To, because it normalizes it. It normalizes it, what they're it doing. It makes it acceptable, absolutely. Right. And, and, and that's a challenging situation. Yeah. And this has happened on small scales too. Um, you know, there's plenty of good reporting, uh, especially there's a little Reply All segment, um, a good podcast if you've ever seen it mm -hmm. uh, or heard it, but they go into like the psyche behind some of these call centers that do like the fake oh your Apple device needs to be repaired or you have a virus on your computer oh, right. and again it's just that mental justification I'm just US is filthy rich and we're just getting a little bit of their money and it's, it's not hurting anybody right and this has kind of been the question well this is this is hurting people this is yeah. causing a massive impact well and social disruption for sure out of this one but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say I hope this is a fad I hope that people do not put any credibility into this social media post and and yeah. hold these criminal organizations uh, accountable. And, and certainly if that doesn't happen, I think if you were to say future here, you really paint a dark picture where, where these groups could um, you know, collaborate. You know, like you said, they have a partner network where right. they begin to form an actual ethos around who they attack and target uh, to achieve uh, criminal activity, and that would be bad. Well, I, I, and I definitely, I wanna say fad too. I think that this is gonna be, like this is the toe in the water. And I think the, strong, the, the stance and the response has to be firm 
and and cohesive and informed. Sure. Um, and pushing back on that and saying no, this cannot happen again. Right. And this does not become the future because if it does become the future, then that is a very disruptive, very normalized situation where we're just yeah, and and we're just expecting we're expecting pieces of infrastructure to go down, right. or major things to go down because just oh another ransomware attack, oh another ransomware Definitely. attack. Well, let's move from that topic on to something oh. a little more entertaining, Apple Ooh. versus Epic Games. Uh, so the trial started this week, I think yesterday, we're in day three right now, um, which is, uh, right, today's the third oh. day? No, 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 we're, we're in the second week. Oh, second week, sorry. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, I'm a little bit off. It's, it's okay. just blown by, blown by. Yeah. but yeah, mm -hmm. um, we are in day six, seven, eight, no, I think we're in day nine, oh, actually. Oh, wow, okay. So I don't think they took a day off. Uh, well, those attorneys are billing by the hour. So yes. right All now. Day, every day. Oh, yes. <laughs> so our fatter feature on this is the future of the App Store. Yeah. So there's the, the, the fundamental argument here is that Apple locks people in uh, to their products, to their software, to their ecosystem, and it effectively has created a monopoly. So in yeah. one case, you're kind of arguing what is a modern uh, monopoly in the age of technology, uh, and, right. and is this going to be you know, allowed to perpetuate? And, and it's honestly, it's very interesting. I mean, sometimes they get a little off topic. They, right. The appropriateness of a banana, for example, was one of my favorite. Just all right, let's spend way too much time on a topic here. Yeah. Um, but they really are kind of the way that I see this. This is kind of part two of the Microsoft monopoly cases mm. of old, right? It was very traditional. Microsoft was saying, you are using our service, you're using our operating system, you have to use our bundle products. You have to use Internet Explorer. It, we're gonna make it really hard for you not to use Internet Explorer. Since then, the world has just evolved massively, especially around mobile devices and phones. Right. And so now you have this kind of, okay, is this a niche device? Is this a device that is, you want Apple to kind of steer and shepherd and ensure what is on there and what you can buy and how you can buy and everything that you interact with that device? Or do you want something that is open and accessible like a Windows computer is kind of traditionally now? Sure. And it wasn't always that way, but we see now in Windows as kind of, you can throw any device, any software you want onto it and it just has to right. run. <laughs> Well, and, and Apple's going to make this strong argument towards security and experience, right. quality of apps, and that's this right. is really a, a cultivation, if you will. Right. Like they're they're cultivating an experience on their devices. well, and, and this is their responsibility to protect mm -hmm. their consumers, and the only way they can do this is by this closed environment. And Epic is going to take kind of the opposite position of this to say that that is not true, um, and this is where the banana comes in because certainly right. Apple is trying to. Uh, insinuate that Epic might not be of the highest quality company. And, right. Um, but that's not the best shepherd for your experience. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and definitely Tim Sweeney is a very interesting character. Um, just from all of this, I was doing some additional research and on his history. And uh, he definitely is a, a quieter man that has some serious ideals. Mm. Uh, and in some of his opening arguments, he was definitely talking about the metaverse okay. in this very interesting way where he's saying, well, we're not building, this isn't just a game. This is just something, this is not something that Apple can cultivate. This is something that is a, a gateway to a larger experience, to okay. a social experience. And whether or not that should be able to be bundled in or tied off or more simply cut off at the legs. Right. Um, Which is what Apple did. They, they shut Epic out of right. the They, they just straight up, up yeah. shut up. And so, and especially some of the things that have come out since. So mm -hmm. like it came out, there was a huge revelation uh, that even shocked some uh, reporters and people in the industry was that when they were doing cross play across the different platforms, this was a widely appreciated thing. Fortnite really pushed that issue right. of, I could actually play on different platforms with my friends. Uh, Sony PlayStation was the big holdout. Right. And it actually came to reveal that Epic actually ended up paying Sony to allow for cross play. Okay. Didn't pay Microsoft Xbox, didn't pay Windows PCs or Android or iOS, mm -hmm. but they had to pay PlayStation to be able to allow for their experience to be cohesive across devices. Okay, very interesting. And so this is kind of the thing, is like where where does the platforms end? Where like where does that cultivation end? Where where can you build something without interfering with it? Well, and I've said that for a while. We're in an age of, you know, um, device agnostic, you know, environment. The cloud has made it so it shouldn't matter what device I'm on, I can have right. An experience with my application or my, you know, personal app or whatever it is I'm doing. It doesn't matter if I'm work or personal. Uh, what device am I on? I, I get what I need. Um, so if we're going to say fad, we're saying Epic wins. 
And if right. you say future, you're saying Apple wins. So where do you stand? Oh, on this that's one? that's so funny because I would actually switch the two. Would you really? Well, I'm yeah. saying future because this is you know this Apple is doing this. So if, oh, okay. if you say this is the future, then we're sticking with the way Apple has it and Google right. has it. And okay. Here we are. Fair. Where you say if it's a fad, then Epic wins and this changes. Oh, okay. I, that I, was I, the I, that was I, kind I, of I, okay. 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 Yes, we're in agreement now. We we got fad or future. Don't worry. Okay. Here yeah, we got that. Um, We've been practicing 15 times now. Yes. Um, so yeah, I would actually say I think I, I think Apple is going to win. I think it's the oh, future. Okay. Um, I just think that Epic's not making the. I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we have the one thing. Fortnite has definitely been the closest, but I don't think we're there yet for the one thing that's going to break those. How you access the thing yet? Okay. Um, but that's that's my okay. approach. Okay. Um, so. uh, but I'm uh, rooting for Apple. All right, all right. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually probably agree with you. So as much as I want to see, you know, I was hoping you'd go fad and I would go future, but I guess we'll go both go future. Uh, I agree that I just think Epic's at the end of the day their arguments not gonna hold up because what Apple is doing is not that different than anybody else in the industry. And if everybody could do what Apple is doing, they would do it. Um, so I think that it's gonna take something besides this legal case, but this legal case is gonna bring attention and hopefully it does bring pressure on Apple and we begin to see some more friendly playing, if you will, in the App Store marketplace and device marketplace. Uh, absolutely. And I think uh, I was actually reading one thing where they were saying like, even if Apple loses, they win. Right. Um, because they very from the onset created this marketing campaign mm -hmm. of painting Apple as a company other than this glorious overlord, this, right. this benevolent dictator, if you will, right. um, making all the right choices for the, your, your interest, the user and then painting them as no, they are cold and calculated and they are a mega business that is tightly controlling a major part of your life. Right. And I think, and I am in full agreement, even if they, I don't know if Apple's, Epic's gonna win, but even if they don't, I think that's starting to shift for Apple okay. in a lot of ways that other companies maybe had that shift coming All right. So we'll both go future on that one. So now let's move into our third topic. Uh, you know, kind of time we're on the uh, on the side of race, hopefully getting vaccinated and getting back to a place that we might expect some normalcy. But you know, one of the things that's happened coming out of the pandemic is sanitation gadgets, and we have a couple that we wanted to talk about today. Just kind of say, is it a fad or future for these gadgets to hang around? I love these gadgets. Which ones do you want to start I love with? These gadgets yeah. so much. Take take your pick. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm going to have to start with the Google inflatable wall. Oh, you want to go for the best first. Okay. Oh, you got to start with the Google inflatable wall. So this was actually something, I guess, um, Google is now expecting almost like 60% of their workforce or something, like uh, a good portion of their workforce to go back to at least part-time in the office, okay. um, which is very interesting. Some of these big companies were very vehement about how they were going to have all remote permanently moving forward, and it's kind of been slowly walked back. So as that's been happening, these gadgets have kind of been popping out of the woodwork of, okay, well, if there's going to be more people in the office, how can we still be responsible and safe? And so I guess, I don't think Google actually came up with it. I think somebody else did, but it's literally like um, the packing materials. It's like those uh, open the, air pocket the air, packing the air materials. Pads, yeah. And Just what it does is it inflates and all those pockets fill up with the air and it's very slow. The GIF is amazing. I hope we put it in this video, um, but it's just, you watch this, like literally this air pocket wall, just like inflate and become a thing. And the woman's doing her best to not pay attention to this right. massive air thing going on next to her. You, and amazing. you can only imagine the sound as the oh, yeah. compressor is right. blowing air into this <laughs> right. wall. The bouncy up. castle sound. Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll put it out there. If we hit 200 subscribers because of episode 15, we'll get a or a little inflatable wall to do it. And, and yes. I can't talk about that. So oh, that would be amazing. Let's see if we can do that. So yeah, bad employees get <clears throat> sent to the inflatable wall room. And that's where you go. Click the subscribe now. <laughs> so, uh, so that's that's a great win, and, and certainly imagining this office with these inflatable walls would be pretty hilarious. Yes. Uh, so, have you seen the uh, portable uh, air cleaners now? That's uh, another hot trend that's going on right now. Air cleaners. Port actually portable and room based. Uh, there's just like a whole new slew of air cleaners that have come out. Okay. No, I have not seen these. Yes. Yeah. So this this started around the holidays. There were a couple then, uh, but now there's a couple that actually have their own Amazon store as well. And uh, these are you know not only they're HEPA air filters, which again these have been around for a while, but suddenly okay. it just seems like there's 
multiple brands out there. It's cool. And it's cool now to be a pure filtration. There, there are no, they're Deco products. I mean, <laughs> you can get them in different colors. You can get them in different sizes and shapes. Oh, you know, um, there's one that's like stainless steel or like all wood. Right. Oh, no, it's it's about it's about how cool your air cleaner is yeah. now, not just the fact that it's an HEPA uh, air cleaner. Okay. So uh, yeah, so I think that's a pretty interesting one because now it's not again it's an accessory post pandemic that you're like. You know, normally you'd come in and it's like, oh, is there a health condition? Like, do you have asthma? Like, yeah. why do you have an air cleaner? But yeah. now, post pandemic, it's, oh, well, everyone's got an air cleaner. And look, mine matches my furniture. Might as well have a cool one. Right. <laughs> well, well, speaking of cool, then I yes. think we'll tie off with the last one is, well, everyone's heard about the UV lights, right? UV has just, you know, it's it's the magical thing. It kills it, all things. It kills all the things. Bad uh, things, of course. You've got the phone scrubbers and no, not good things, not at all. Yes. Um, but, and you even have the light bulb that was like the low level UV, so like it would do things from a distance, which is like makes you a little. But not you know, give you a sunburn. You're you're fine. You're yeah, fine. Don't yeah, worry. It's don't, a, worry. don't question it too much. Um, but then they had the Roomba one, which is uh, not it's not actually a Roomba, but. It is a basically it's a tower robot that has UV lights at all angles and it literally just goes around your office shining UV lights on oh, how special. It's adorable. It's one of those things where you just gotta put Google does it, eyes. Does on. it come with UV glasses so you don't <laughs> burn anybody's eyes or anything? Or? I hope people are only running those things after hours, right. but I mean poor Jim working late and all right. of a sudden he's accosted by the UV light robot. I mean you just go running <laughs> for the door. So I mean yeah, and I don't want to know how much that thing costs. Yeah. I'm sure it's costly, but it's these products are just kind of popping up, and I'm sure it's throw everything at the wall. It can't hurt. See what sticks, right? People right. want to feel like they're doing something. Um, and that's it. It's just kind of. Yeah. I, I think these products. Fear is always one of the best sellers. You know, if mm -hmm. someone's afraid of something, and you can create a product that alleviates that fear, there's a there's a good chance they're going to buy it. Right. Uh, well, and that was that was actually read the whole toilet paper theory. I, I yeah. remember a psychologist was explaining it. And it was basically like, in times of fear, you have to have the need to feel like you're doing something. Right. And so buying toilet paper is like the lowest barrier of entry. I'm preparing a little bit for this thing. I can alleviate my tensions. I'm good. And so this is probably yeah. Businesses this are like. like People are coming back into an office. There's a lot of people nearby. Well, I've got I've got the robot. He's I've got Johnny Five. We're good. Right. Everybody's happy. So do you feel like uh, these gadgets are going to keep showing up more and more gadgets this is the future? I think I think the money that's being made right now, honestly, is going to sustain a lot of these little businesses to kind of keep moving forward. Okay. I think we're going to be in this little growth spurt of gadgets, cleaning gadgets. People are going to be conscientious. Mm -hmm. And especially the fact of people got sick a lot less too, like just normal run of the mill sick less right. because of all the precautions. This I think insane, that sure. interest just might be like, hey, if we make it sure so that the flu doesn't go around. Might be worth it. And we'll get lower health insurance costs someday. Oh, that'd be amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you on that one too. So we'll be uh, three for three on a green today. Uh, future for sure. I think we're gonna see these gadgets hang around for a while, and uh, I think we'll see some new creative ideas still to come. So maybe we'll have another episode where we talk yeah. about some new ones. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> maybe on maybe on Prime Day we can get a fancy air purifier. Nice, run around our office. Yes. It'll be well, good. thank you for watching this episode. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, post any questions or suggestions for topics below. And as always, thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Williams. I'm Justin Callahan. Bye. Bye.